Do you have in your mind a definition of what, what does it mean to be content? Yeah, sure. Uh, I stole it from a book I was reading, so uh, there it's that. But um, it's deep satisfaction with the will of God. Ooh. So Repeat that one, would deep you please? Deep satisfaction it. with the will of God. Whatever it is in your life right then. Man, that's good. Yes. I think whoever's listening right now, there's a whole lot of conviction going on right <laughs> I now. I hope because so. Because we all know we've kind of struggled with not so deep satisfaction. Well, yeah, and if you think discontent is deep displeasure at what God is doing. And so... What a contrast. I know, right? You don't want either one of those. You don't want grumbling or refusal to thank hmm. or covetousness. I'm the word of God. I will build my house. I will build my house. Welcome to Grounded. I'm Steve Hartland, pastor at Cornerstone Community Church in Joppa, Maryland. And today the topic is, well, it's actually part two. Mm -hmm. uh, the topic is the sins of women and how to slay them. Just want to say we're having another episode where we already had another episode about the sins of men and how to slay them. So we're being fair here, mm -hmm. but it's the sins of women and how to slay them, part two. Two. If you didn't hear part one, I'd recommend you go back and hear that first. Taylor, welcome. Thanks Hi. for being here. Yeah. We've known each other for a while now. In fact, we're both from the same town in Maryland. We're sure both in Westminster. Are. Westminster. That's pretty crazy. It is. It's a cute little town. Yeah, it's great. And we have a family effort going on here because you're here behind the yes. microphone. Your husband, as always, is over there behind the yes. camera. Yes. Tomorrow, he's going to be behind the microphone. Uh, yes. We're doing another one, him and me, on a different topic tomorrow. Yeah. But my wife's involved too because she's at your house watching my baby, watching your four, your three. I said four. We had four. <laughs> I'll watching, do that. <laughs> watching your three boys. So yeah, uh, three. we're all involved. And of course, hi Sean. Thank you for yes. being here too. Didn't want to leave you Always. out. All right. So um, the sins of women. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to your children for a minute. Sure. So I've heard a few stories that mm. you and Jason have told us mm. about some crazy thing that happened <laughs> with your boys. Mm. Do you have a favorite one? What's like, what's like the craziest oh, thing, yeah. the wildest moment on record? Oh man, it was when, it's always when the house is quiet that you start getting nervous. So the house was uh -huh. quiet uh -huh. and Jason and I uh -huh. were downstairs and we see looking out our back window, just things falling. And we're like, oh my gosh, what is that? We run upstairs, our boys are throwing everything in their room, out of their second story window. Uh -huh. Everything. I they, mean, every every book, every stuffed animal, everything that could be picked up was And probably out. laughing and oh, loving it. Oh, they were loving watching it. Watching things hit. Oh my goodness, they were loving it. They uh -huh. thought it was so funny. Um, of course, me as a mom, I responded with, oh my gosh, that's terrifying, you're going to fall out. Um, uh -huh. And so I put bars up the next day. Oh. Uh -huh. And then my three-year-old said to my four-year-old, oh, Brubby, go get the screwdriver. We're going to take these off. I know off. how to take that off. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what? How are we going to yeah. keep them safe? So they have not gotten those bars off, thank goodness. All right. But yes, but this that's is our, real life. You guys are in real life. Real life. <laughs> a real marriage, a real family, real boys. By the way, when I think it was Jason who first told me about this. Mm. I don't think you were oh. there. And, and I thought, well, I have to say first, I have to say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But then I thought, but I think it's cool. I know, <laughs> uh -huh. I know. Guys experimenting with things flying through yes. space, and bouncing off the hard earth. Well, and now I'm ha I'm like, go ahead, you can throw things out. Now there's bars. You're not you you're fall. not going to fall out, and that's what matters uh -huh. yeah, to me. <laughs> so yes. All right, that's a pretty pretty good wildest moment uh, on record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so back to our topic: sins of women and how to slay them. So some preliminaries. Uh, here's the mm -hmm. first one. Uh, why are we even talking about this? Why why would this even come up? Do you have any thoughts on that? I have a few thoughts. On yeah, I I think because we all want to be holy, like as he is holy, and so we should focus on sin to slay it. Um and if Paul talks to specific groups of people, you know, husbands, pastors, um wives, children even, then it's okay for us to do that too. Yeah, that right? sounds real good. Makes sense. Yeah. So is it appropriate for me a guy in our current culture is, uh, it, is it appropriate biblically for me a guy <laughs> to talk about sins of women or is there something wrong with that no that's called pastoral care yeah all right good. yes thank you that was well said i like that <laughs> uh -huh. pastor pastors are supposed to say to anybody here's what the bible says about mm -hmm. you and your circumstances yes. young old male female doesn't all matter different yeah. races doesn't matter yep. yeah so very good bible is key. um are we rushing into a place where angels would not dare to tread? Hmm. I'm not so sure about that, right? Yeah, I think not. Yeah. Yeah. 
we're good. All right, let's go. Here's how I'm going to get us going. So, Taylor. Yes, sir. You and I have talked ahead of time. They'll all know that. Yes, they don't mind. of course. We've talked ahead of time about what are some of the sins we're going to talk about yeah. and all that. If you had to pick one, mm -hmm. it's it's a sin that is kind of uniquely committed by women. Mm. Um. And one rises to the top, like, oh, that's the big one. Yeah. That's the bad one. That's the word, et cetera. Can you, can you pick one? What would it be? I think we'll talk about this more later, um, but I think it is the fact that we tend to bottle things up. And what happens when we bottle them is it creates bitterness. And so we are so cool. We might not even notice it, but it will start to grow in our hearts, bitterness. And one of the ways that we deal with this bitterness in our heart, we don't like it, um, is we gossip. And so we'll say, um, oh, I'll share my bitterness with others. We might not even be thinking about this mm. consciously, but we're like, oh, this is just so heavy on my heart. Or I just can't stop thinking about this. And what it is, is it's bitterness. Mm. And so we should have started with the original sin of bitterness. But now we have two sins that we have to deal with of gossip as well. Mm. And so I, that's, that's what I think is a tendency of women is to go to bitterness because we want to be agreeable so the bitterness is a root mm -hmm. and the gossiping then would be a fruit yes root, root of and fruit. Root. yep mm -hmm. what causes what would cause the bitterness in the first place are there some mm. categories of things that might what might make mm. a woman bitter yeah um i think the main one would probably be discontent and mm. so either um i want something that i don't have um or <laughs> I, which is just coveting, right? I mean, if we want to say it that big. Tenth commandment. Um, yeah. Or I will refuse to thank God for what I have. Mm. And so that is the other side of it. Um, but we get bombarded. I mean, our culture encourages covetousness, I think. Oh, absolutely. Um, and yeah. so covetousness is in our faces all the time. But it can even be relationally. Like, oh, I want a best friend mm -hmm. just like her. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not going to thank God for the friends that I do have <clears throat> because it's not like that one that I see hmm. um, or with your children. I mean, you can complain in your heart all day long and that can be a bitterness or you can be thanking God for these blessings. That's what he says. And his word is true is the children are blessings. Are they difficult? Yes. But you can still thank God because that's his will for you mm. is to thank him in all circumstances for all things. That's so. really good. But the bitterness then leads to gossiping. Yes. Is gossiping in the Bible? Oh, yes. Quite a lot, so I think. The Bible says something about gossiping. Mm -hmm. it says, says it's not good. Don't do it. I mean, isn't there a warning in one of the Timothys about don't be one of those women that goes door to door? And gossips. And gossips. Yes. Yeah. So. So why would gossiping be a sin named in the Bible? Why does it make it to the level of God says, I want that sin, gossiping, in my Bible so mm -hmm. people know about it and be aware. Why, why would, what's wrong with mm. gossiping? Hmm. Uh, I think it is, there, there is almost nothing good that comes from it. <laughs> so I want to say that. <laughs> um, and then I think in addition to it is it is, it's a refusal to thank. God um, and to and to come to him. So it's going to other people um, for counsel, for comfort, for, uh, may, dare I say it, drama mm. um, and affirmation and things like that, rather than just going to your God and you're saying, God, you're not sufficient. Mm. Right. You're saying that's what you're saying to God when you need to go to your friends or your family and say, you know, this is just what's going on. And I I wonder, I, I think there is a place for uh, processing somewhat, but we don't want to ever cross in, over into gossiping. So would there, can you give us a definition for gossiping? <laughs> Just sure. a straight. I'd like to. So yeah. in, in the Hebrew Old Testament, yeah. originally written in Hebrew and a little bit of Aramaic, there are actually yeah. four different words used, different Hebrew words used that all, they all mean about the same thing. They all okay. mean gossiping. And I'm not going to go into those. In the Greek New Testament, yes. the whole New Testament's written in Greek, there are yes. two words, and they're pretty interchangeable. They mean about the same thing. But the first one is interesting. It's onomatopoeic. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pronounced psthersmus. Mm -hmm. And the ps on the front is like a whisper. Yeah. It's like ps. 
Hey, Taylor. Did you hear? Did you hear? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Taylor's ears get big because, yeah, <laughs> it's like a morsel going to go down into your oh, It's yes. like a donut. So um, it's only used in a bad sense in the New mm -hmm. Testament of whispering, gossiping, tail bearing, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, the related form of it, it's a different form, is uh, a whisperer or a tail bearer. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the Greek words. And uh, they always appear, th this and the other one, they always appear in very close proximity to this second Greek word, kata lala, speaking evil of others, slandering ah, others. It's okay. the noun slanderer. So whisper and slanderer, those two travel together mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Okay. They show up in the same list. Okay. So why would that be? So when you're gossiping, are you ever slandering? I think so, yes. Probably a lot, huh? Yeah. I would think a lot. So, yeah. like, if I'm gossiping to you about your husband over there, which would be a bad idea, right? Yeah, real bad. Uh, uh -huh. But I would probably be slandering him. I'm making him look bad mm -hmm. to you. Does it have to be untrue for it to be slander? No. Okay. That's what I've always wondered. So, yeah. Yeah. No, if you're just trying to damage somebody else's reputation. Mm, in the eyes of the hearer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Spurgeon said something that gossip damages the speaker. Oh, that's right. The teller. And the one, the subject, who, and so it's poison for all three. And that's really good. Yeah. Spurgeonic. Spurgeon. There you go. So <laughs> gossip's not a minor sin. It makes its way into mm -hmm. Paul's Romans chapter one, hall of infamy. Yes. Like there's a long list of what's really bad about fallen humans. And let me just read a little bit of it. Romans one twenty nine. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are mm -hmm. full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips. Mm -hmm. There's the one word and slanderers, mm. there's the other word, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful, they invent ways of doing evil, they disobey their parents, they are senseless, faithless, heartless, mm -hmm. ruthless. So in the middle of that list, all of infamy, mm -hmm. there's gossips and slanderers. So what this means is, as followers of Christ, we want to become really careful about what we allow yes. our mouths to say, right? Yes. So we want to be really careful that we're not saying things that God would not want us to say. And that requires a lot of self-control, a lot of restraint. Yes. Um, Fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, is self-control. Self-control. Exactly. And those mm -hmm. things don't come naturally. By the way, no. gossip's also supposed to be repented of. Yes. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, Paul says he fears that when he comes there, he'll find you not as he wants to find you. There may be quarreling, jealousy, mm -hmm. outbursts of wrath, anger, factions, slander. Mm -hmm. There's the one word. Gossip, there's the other mm -hmm. word. Arrogance and disorder. So in another list of Paul. I'm afraid I'm going to get to Corinth and find you all a mess. Part of that is slander and gossip. Yes. So bad things, huh? Yes. So, again, why is it a sin? What what damage does it do? I guess I guess you talked about that enough. Huh? Yeah, I I don't know. I I think it also. It's like lying, right? Especially exactly. like like if if you're truly not telling the truth, it is just a straight lie. But when you're also trying to damage somebody else in the eyes of another. Um, that's not honoring them, and that's not being loving. And so, of course, it's a sin, right? We're supposed yes. to love them as ourselves, and if we wouldn't want to be talked about that way, then we shouldn't be talking about them that way. Yeah. And if you're trying to damage somebody's reputation, that would actually fall under, you remember, every command in the Bible mm -hmm. comes under one of the Ten Commands, and the Ten yes. Commands come under the two commands, yes. love God, love people. Yes. Then there's the first table of the Ten, that's loving God. God. Second table uh -huh. of the Ten, that's loving people. Yes. So where does the, the command, don't slander, um, don't... Uh, Bear false witness, Yeah, maybe. and don't, don't try to damage somebody else's reputation. Mm -hmm. Under which command would that be? It actually... In Puritan literature, and I think everybody's mm -hmm. mind, it falls under the command, thou shalt not kill. Oh, that's great. You're trying to kill them mm. reputationally. Yes. You're trying to kill their reputation so yeah. that other people will think ill of them. So you're actually mm. committing a form of the sin of murder. It's character assassination. Yes. Uh, when, when you're slandering and trying to damage somebody's reputation. It's a really, really evil sin. And yet I think Christians do it mm -hmm. all the time, oh, yes. kind of like with their halo on. It's like, mm -hmm. this, this is innocent. I'm being pure. Yeah. I'm just seeking counsel or yes. I'm just burying my soul to a friend or mm -hmm. whatever and yes. really you're just slandering and wagging your tail and yeah. tearing somebody up it's yeah. evil it is yeah it is i think we can even do it about our children and so we have to be careful <clears throat> to not um though they are we, we do need to seek counsel for our children because we are responsible uh parties for helping them right and so mm -hmm. we do need actual counsel with them but when it's um 
when they become the butt of jokes or it's only negative. And so your friends start to think, oh, geez, that one is just he's just a mess. Um, you know, you you start to uh, change the way other people are looking at your children, even, I think. And so you have to be careful about that. All right. Sins of women. Yeah. Now, in talking about uh, what we just did, you, you also mentioned discontent. Like, that, where does the there bitterness come from? It yeah. might come from discontent. Yep. And maybe discontent, it, its cousin is complaining. Huh? Mm-hmm. And these yeah. are sins of women, maybe more than men. I think so. Yeah, I think probably so too. Are men capable of complaining? Of course. Of course. <laughs> yes. Yes. Does that man over there over there ever complain? No. Tell me the truth. Never. No, I can't of imagine him complaining. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think All he's a complainer. <laughs> but uh so discontent might be a, a unique sin of women in that mm-hmm. we know from yes. from modern reliable psychology. Okay. So Tell me about wor- this. world class psychologists. Most of whom are women, because women are interested in people and relationships. Mm-hmm. Men are over there in the engineering school. Yes, They're interested they are. in things and systems. Yes. So most of them are women. Most of them would probably lean feminist, by the way. They like mm-hmm. feminist results yes, to everything. They, they, but yeah. they, they tell us that in general, we all know this, in general, women are less happy than men. Yes. It's the way we're wired. Yes. A woman is a finely tuned, amazing machine. And a man's kind of like a clodhopper, an old dude. So <laughs> so women are finely tuned, and there are reasons why. But part of that is then, living in this world, women are less happy than men. Mm-hmm. So on like the big five scale, there's uh, O-C-E-A-N. N is neuroticism. That means mm-hmm. the presence of negative emotions. Women mm-hmm. score one, on average, one full standard deviation higher than men oh in unhappy. Wow. Okay. So generally, women are less happy than men. So women would tend to complain more than men and, uh-huh. and become bitter more than men. Yes. And so do men complain? Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, discontent and its cousin complaining. So, so part of what we're talking about as we go here is and how to slay them. Yes. Right? These are the mm-hmm. sins and how to slay them. Mm-hmm. So somebody's struggling with discontent, this very thing. They're saying, hey, that's me. Mm-hmm. Discontent, complaining, bitterness in their soul. Mm-hmm. Can you give them some ideas how to start? How do you start dealing with that and changing that in your heart? Well, I think it's taking every thought captive. Mm-hmm. And so we have to start there where your thoughts are drifting. I think we may even say naturally drifting towards these more negative thoughts. But if you're always just telling yourself negative things, then you're going to probably believe them. But if you change that and you go and you um, start to focus on the things that are above, um, whatever is pure and lovely and the rest of that list that I'm not remembering right now. It says think on these things and the God of peace will be with you. Yes, think on them. And so, and and again, the, the thing that helps me the most is just stopping myself and saying, what can I thank God for right now? Oh. Yeah, that's like. Say that again. Sure. What do you do? You actually do this? Yeah, I stop. Like you're starting to go. And then. And I just say, stop. What can I thank God for right now? Um, and that is what I what I do. And so I immediately am changing it to, it, this isn't a fake. I, there are so many things for us to thank the Lord for. Mm. We're breathing. Yeah, um, you know, just that. We have fresh water right there in a sink. Mm. Um, I'm, mm. you know, like uh-huh. so many things. I'm standing in a healthy working body. Um, all of these things. And so I can just stop, thank God, and that changes it typically. Scripture says, but instead, giving it thanks. Yes. So that's what you're doing. That's what I'm trying By to do. By the way, same psychologists also yeah. tell us that here's a good idea. If you're struggling with anxiety, depression, and you go to bed, and then your brain tends to start mm. working on what mm-hmm. you're unhappy about, and you, you wake up with night terrors and whatever oh, else. Yes. So one of the things they say to do is, before you go to bed, every night, physically write down on something three things that you're thankful for mm. about that day. So it's kind of fits mm-hmm. right in with what you're saying. Yes, yes. You fight this with being thankful, all right? And and I and I just want to mention this as well for women. Um, we don't <laughs> often in this feminist age want to acknowledge the fact that we do go through um, a higher hormonal period sure. in our in our month, but also in our lives, like after children. And so we can just look at this feeling and say, I think that's 70% hormones and just throw it away. I don't need to say, huh. oh no, why? Why am I feeling this way? Oh, it's, I'm, everything's dramatic and I need to break everything down. No, it's just like, ah, this one's just bad. Let's just throw it away and start over again. So, Does that work? Have you done that? And I, it do. Works? I do. Yeah. I do that you pretty can, like, often. Throw it away. Yeah. I, well, yes. It takes a lot of discipline not to go and pick it back up, right? Over uh, in the garbage. Uh-huh. Sometimes you want to go through the dumpster, but um, you just have to say, no, no, no. That one's just 
probably ridiculous. So just leave it over there and that's it. I like that. I think, that, I think that's really great. Well, good. <laughs> so, all right, discontent and its cousin complaining. So, scripture, let's stay on that a little longer. Mm-hmm. Scripture talks about being content. Mm-hmm. So, Paul to Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. For yes. I brought nothing into the world I can take down with yep. me, so um, I should just be content. Yes. How would you define content? Like, I would define it. Content is the point at which I can say, ah, oh, mm-hmm. it's good. Yes. I'm yes. happy. Thank you, God. You know, yeah. I'm, so I'm yep. content, right? Mm-hmm. And Paul also says having food and yes. clothing. <laughs> what a low bar. Yeah, what's the, <laughs> what's the standard? Low bar. That's right. All I need yes. to be content is, did I eat today? I did. Do I have clothes on? I do. Then thank you, Lord. Yes. I'm blessed. So the sink is extra. Yeah, I have I running know. water, I right? Know. I have air conditioning. That's extra. Yep. We're blessed, blessed, blessed. But yes. what, do you have in your mind a definition of what, what does it mean to be content? Yeah, sure. Uh, I stole it from a book I was reading, so... Uh, there it's that, but um, it's deep satisfaction with the will of God. Ooh. So repeat that one, would deep you please? That's satisfaction deserves. with the will of God, whatever it is in your life right then. And that's good. Yes. I think whoever's listening right now, there's a whole lot of conviction going on right <laughs> I now. I hope because so. Because we all know we've kind of struggled with not so deep satisfaction. Well, yeah, and if you think discontent is deep displeasure at what God is doing. And so what a contrast. I know, right? You don't want either one of those. You don't want grumbling or refusal to thank mm-hmm. or covetousness. Mm-hmm. So wow. Yeah. So if you're struggling with these things, let me recommend a couple of things right now just like pastorally, okay? Yes. The sword of the spirit is powerful in your life. And when you want to deal with something, when you want to slay sins, when you want to mm-hmm. cut things that aren't God pleasing mm-hmm. out, one of the things you need is the sword of the spirit, like memorize it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Mm. Find specific passages. So you're, you're dealing with discontent. Find passages about being content. Memorize them. And you get them written on the back side of your <laughs> eyelids. Every time you blink, you see them. They're yes. tattooed in there. Start your day, if you're struggling with this, with a, with a card with the verses on there. And you look at them and pray mm. them in that day. And ask the Lord, Lord, help me with this. And then maybe gang up on it. Now you have that going on. Also, have fellowship about these things. The Bible mm-hmm. says, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you mm-hmm. may be healed. Mm-hmm. So you've got a good friend. So there's your husband over there. Again, yeah. we keep referring to him. Yeah, I, know. I, I might call your husband and say, hey, man, I'm really struggling struggling with discontent. Would you be my prayer partner? Can mm-hmm. we can we touch base once a week for a while? Mm-hmm. And he says, no, man, I'm busy. <laughs> he is busy. No, he'd, he'd, probably, no. he'd say, yeah, I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. So get some fellowship going on. That's that's focused fellowship, helping you deal mm-hmm. with your sin. And those, those are two really good starters. Another one might be like, go talk to one of your pastors. Mm-hmm. Notice yeah. I didn't say a counselor. I, I'm all for counselors, mm-hmm. but I'd start with a pastor as a counselor yeah. and let him decide, do you need somebody that's more professional yes. than he is? So anything you want to add to my list? Just repent. That's just say, good. Just say first out, Lord, forgive me. I am complaining. Lord, forgive me. I am discontent. I don't want to thank you right now. That's really good. There. <laughs> Just repent. <That's> right. <laughs> All right. What, what else are some sins of women? How about, um, let's talk about emotions mm. and self-control. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, what are emotions? How do they work? What's happening there? Oh, man. Emotions, I would say, are your natural responses to the external world. Right. Making that up right now. Um, and so it it can either be holy or unholy. So when you hold your baby for the first time, you're just bursting with joy and thankfulness. And I would say that's just a natural response. That is godly. It's holy. It's good. Um, but often I think we are responding to things in an unholy way. Somebody cuts you off or um, gets in line in front of you or something like that, and you respond with, ugh, you know? And that, you might not even be able to name what that emotion is, but you know it's sin. That's not a whole, God is not pleased with that, ugh, at somebody else. He wants us to respond the way Jesus would have, which is sweetness. Hmm. Uh, I think Amy Carmichael has this quote, and and it's um, a cup Brimful of sweetness um, will only spill out sweetness, even with the greatest jolt. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, right? You memorized that. <laughs> it might not be perfect, but yes. <laughs> so, 
are men and women different? I'm asking you an opinion. Are men and women different in terms of emotions? Oh, yes. I think so. Yes. So do yeah. all the psychologists. Okay, right? good. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm in so agreement. It's kind of no. We know that men and women are different in this. Mm-hmm. Men, are, men are a little more flat and less bumpy in emotions. Mm-hmm. And yes. uh, not all men. We're talking on average, right? Of course. Um, and women will have to struggle probably more with mm-hmm. emotions. But what about what about this thing that... Um, my emotions are valid and you have to validate them. Oh, yes. Have you heard about that thing? Oh, yes. I think that can be a huge problem. And again, it goes, it goes back to like the definition. Are you saying when you say validate my emotions, are you saying, oh, you need me to say that they exist and that they must be dealt with? Sure, I can do that. But if you're trying to make me say that they're right, hmm. that they're good, that they're holy, I'm not going to say that. Um, because sometimes they're not. Sometimes you just need to repent. Um, and we don't want to feel like we're captives to our emotions. Well, okay, let me say, the Lord doesn't want us to feel that way. Sometimes I think we do. We like the drama of it, just to be honest. Um, and so we want to mm. not be captive. We want to govern our emotions in such a way that we can say, okay, so I have this emotion. I've prayed a lot about it. It's still not going away. So now what do I do? And that's where it's like, we still need to acknowledge that this is there. We need to probably repent more and I might need some more help, like going to a pastor. Some help, yeah. But yeah, when you are letting yourself be captive by your emotions, you have actually a victim mindset and it puts the resp- the responsibility of that emotion on the outside world, either on the person who offended you or or something else. And then what do you have to do? You have to create an environment where you never get hurt. Mm-hmm. Right. That's Which we're trying, people are trying to like, create. Right? I think that's uh-huh. called a safe space. Yeah, a safe <laughs> so, space. They, they're yes. not allowed to say a word that I don't want to hear. Yes, yeah, exactly. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Yes. So, all right, very yeah. good. So if, if emotions are out of control, then what's one thing that comes into play here? And that is the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, mm-hmm. peace, self-control, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So the person who wants their emotions validated is saying, it's just, it's right mm-hmm. that I have these totally out of control emo- yes. emotions that I have. Yes. That's on you. It's not on me. It's, yes. I'm the victim here. But really, the scripture says you need to learn self-control. Is that right? Yes. And, and you need to take responsibility for your own emotions um, and not have somebody else take take responsibility for them. I think there is a place for uh, walking someone through. Again, I'm talking mostly about my children. Um, But when they are out of control, um, I get to step in and say, yes, you're out of control. Let's repent. But I will help you walk through um, this getting self-control back over Mm -hmm. these emotions. And so I I think there's a place for husbands with wives, for friends to step in and even say, okay, so this one's out of control. Can we both acknowledge that? And now let's walk back to sanity and back to what the Lord wants from us, which is self-control. Yeah. This could be, uh, part of what Peter has in mind when he says in first Peter five, um, husbands dwell with your wives, according to Mm -hmm. knowledge, granting them honor as joint heirs of the grace of life. And, um, Uh, when you live with them, dwell with them according to understanding. Part of what your understanding is, it might be more challenging for her. It might be more difficult for her. It might be a more frequent problem for her to have to self-control and rein Mm -hmm. in feelings and emotions that are powerful, Mm -hmm. very powerful things. So just speaking very personally, my wife happens to be, I'm really blessed, she is a very steady, (laughs) even-keeled person. She rarely has even like a blip in the the line. I mean, nonetheless, one of these. So (laughs) so my life is too easy. No, it's not too easy, but it is easy. Mm -hmm. But um, I I think we would both agree that if if one of us is going to have more trouble with uh, emotions getting out of control. It, it's her. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't yes. be me. And so she appreciates, she even told me this yesterday, just mm. came up yesterday. She appreciates when I'm able to help her like look yes. at it, let's rein mm-hmm. it in, let's subdue it here mm-hmm. so we can go on in peace. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes. So much so. I'm not like your wife. Um, I am uh-huh. one who is very, uh, who's had to struggle for a long time with my emotions and mm-hmm. has been jerked around them for, for too long. Um, and yes, I so much appreciate my husband being, um, putting, helping me doubt my doubts or like helping me doubt mm-hmm. this emotion and just say like, 
well, let's see, is it really this big? Is it really this bad? Um, Because that's often where I go. It's like, this is just the world's ending. (laughs) And it's just like, oh, gosh. Uh Um, And so it it is, it's a blessing. And I think that's a way that God made it to be. Um, The strength of a man being used to help a woman subdue her emotions. Yes. It's great. We need the strengths of the woman and we need the strengths Mm -hmm. of the man. Now we're talking about the strengths of the man helping the woman in some areas where she has more weakness. Yes, yes. But it happens vice versa too. What about anxiety and fear? So we know, again, (laughs) psychologists tell us that women score higher in neuroticism. Mm -hmm. That's spelled with an Mm -hmm. N, not an E, by the way. (laughs) Neuroticism. Neuroticism. (laughs) And um, because of that, (laughs) <laughs> they're, they're looking at me over there. Because of that, um, there tends to be more anxiety and mm-hmm. more fear. But Scripture says, be anxious for nothing, mm-hmm. but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. Yes. So what about anxiety and fear? Can you talk about those? Yeah. Um, that, again, anxiety is one of the things that I've had to deal with a lot in my life. Um both uh, postpartum anxiety that where it's just out of control and needing extra help with that. Um, But then also just the day to day anxiety where my thoughts begin to darken Um, Hmm. clouds come over and I start to Hmm. worry um, and think, Oh no, this could mean, and I start to spin off into the future because I think, so I I'm a future oriented person. And so I'm always thinking and worrying about the future, but the Lord, the Lord just says, don't be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow can be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And so I just need to often, again, cut that thought and put it in the garbage can. I can deal with it when I get there, if it happens. And, um, Often it doesn't. <laughs> so. Hold on. There's a Mark Twain thing about that. Let's see if I can get oh, okay. it. Something about like, I lived a long life and had many troubles and problems, most of which never happened. Yes. <laughs> oh, like that's that. so true. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and just remembering that the Lord cares about us. Um, so he wants to hear my thoughts and my worries. And so I don't have to just think, I have to sit here and just think about them myself. It's like, oh, I can turn to the creator of the universe and the savior of my soul and say, Lord, I'm worried about this. Hmm. Lord, I'm getting fearful about this. Um, and he cares for me. He wants me to do that. Um, and, but yeah, the, the Psalm that I always come back to with this is, um, is that the righteous is not afraid of bad news. Mm, um, that's good. yeah, that his heart is firm, trusting in the Lord, his heart is steady and he will not be afraid. And so, Often I even have that. I have that on my mirror um, because I need to remember I don't need to fear bad news. Why? Because the Lord, because the Lord, is, he's, he's with the Lord. me he's with and me. he's the Lord and I can trust him. He's good. So in everything we're talking about, you keep bringing in scripture yeah. and scripture <laughs> and scripture. It's obvious you're bringing scripture into your life to bear on challenges that you might face. Mm-hmm. And I think you're modeling something really good there for, yeah. for our listeners. Um, you should notice here, this is hiding God's word in your heart mm. that you might not sin against him. This is bringing mm-hmm. the sword of the spirit to bear on things in your life. And you're mm-hmm. obviously doing it. Trying. It's not best. always easy, right? <laughs> no. but, but you have to not do at it. All. all right. What about, um, moving on to depression. Yeah. Depression. So again, sure. women scoring higher in neuroticism, mm-hmm. the presence of negative emotions are going to score higher than men in depression. Do men get mm-hmm. depressed? Sure. Mm-hmm. But on, on average, women are one full standard deviation higher, scoring yes. higher in, in depression. Mm-hmm. Um, some of that is probably just the way women are fearfully and wonderfully made and need to be yes. uh, for the sake of the planet, for the sake yes. of humanity, for the sake of children, babies, children, mm-hmm. young adults and so on, managing a home and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but depression is a problem. What do you want to say mm-hmm. about that? I'm sure. sure. Have you struggled with it? Sure yeah. have. Absolutely. Um, especially, um, I think in the early years with lots of little kids at home, um, it can be overwhelming. And so that, that, uh, feeling of overwhelming can also lead to, it will always be overwhelming. Yeah. Uh-huh. This will never change. Huh. I have no hope. Hmm. Um, so thus I just should give up. Um, so, which is like a depression kind of mindset. Um, but something that I have to remind myself is that the Lord himself is the lifter of my head. Um, and he 
has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness for today. Um, something else, Rob Scott said this once, and he said, um, the Lord doesn't uh, give you grace for your imagination. And so you have to think about that too. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so, something that, so I have one son who is always sad and he's always saying, mama, I so sad. We had that son too. You had that son yeah. too. Okay. So there's typically uh, or one. Or still have. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just something, even the, um, just the way that I, I, the Lord has given me to parent him of just being like, oh, well, is God with you right now? Well, in his presence is fullness of joy. So you mm. have, you can be joyful even now. Man. And so. How old is he? He's three. He's three. <laughs> he's getting this when he's three. Yeah. The boy, he's blessed. I hope. Yeah. He's, he's going to struggle <laughs> with depression, but he's blessed to have you yes. as his mom because you're bringing the word of God to bear Yes, yeah. exactly. And so, and again, it comes back to repentance. When you're letting yourself be drowned in your sadness, repent. Just say, Lord, I'm being drowned in my sadness, but I know the truth that in your presence is joy. Give me joy. Hmm. You know, you can just pray and, and, and talk to the Lord about this. Um, and, and one thing that just stuck out to me so much in First Peter was um, talking about Sarah. So, you know, you don't often think that Sarah was such a great lady because often she was doing things that you're like, what is, what is she doing? But um, it says there that we can be her children if we do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. And I think that mm. that is also depression of like, this will always be this terrible. Um, and so I want to be, I want to be her child. You know, I want to be her, her daughter and not fear anything that is actually frightening. Um, Amen. So, so yeah. this is, by the way, this is another characteristic of a higher end score, mm. higher neuroticism score. Is there's anxiety, there's fear, there's mm. depression, there's worries, and and the fears mm. are very often, and uh, the anxieties are very often about mm. things that don't exist. Yes, it's yes. imagined yes. things. Like mm-hmm. Rob said, the Lord didn't yeah. give you grace for your no, imagination. No. Um, they're imagined things, things that are not in reality. You're misreading the situation wrong. You're dreaming. Mm-hmm. It. So. Um, it's very important to bring yourself back to scripture and back to reality and mm-hmm. back to God's presence and the Lordship of Christ. Yes. I love the way you're doing it. Is there, do you think that there's a reason why that's been built into us? Is it just the fall mm-hmm. or is it um, maybe more of that? Like we're worried about the thing, the, the lion that could come out and kill our kids, you know, like, yes, that, it's, is that. It there? it's, I think that? it's that. Okay. So, you so. know, part of the fine, the wonderful, fearfully and wonderfully made fine tuning of a woman's brain and soul and heart is there part of it. I'm not saying this is her whole existence, but part of it is because she's the one who's going to bear the children. She's mm. going to, the one who's going to nurse the children. She's going to raise the babies. She's going to take more responsibility for the, for the family. Mm-hmm. Even where husband and wife both have full-time careers and mm-hmm. good careers, they're still, when they get home, guess who does more with the kids? It's, it's the mom. mom. It's always <laughs> yeah. mom, you know, most of the time yeah. on average. Um, so she has to be fine tuned so that she's awake, alert to, dangers mm. to the children, right? Mm-hmm. I'm protecting mm-hmm. them. If it wasn't for mom, a lot of kids wouldn't make it. <laughs> it's so right? true. Because dad's oblivious, <laughs> right? He's not fine-tuned. He's not alert. He's not tuned uh. in. He's tuned into, there's a lion out there. Mm-hmm. Right? He can see that lion yes. better than she can. Yes. She can see details in here and, mm-hmm. and take them all in better than he can. Mm-hmm. So women can multitask because they have to. Mm-hmm. And yes. men can single-task because they have to. There's a yep. lion out there. I'm going to go get threat. that lion. Yep. So it's it's the some of the fine tuning of the different ways God made men and women. I think, yeah. and in the fallen state, that mm. fine tuning can turn into depression, anxiety, mm. yeah, and so on. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Probably part of what Peter had in mind when he refers to the wife as being a weaker vessel. Yeah. That's obvious physically. Men mm-hmm. are generally much stronger than women. Yes. But. Uh, uh, Emotionally and psychologically, we all know it's absolute fact. Women struggle a lot more. Most people who go to therapists, you know, the larger number, I don't know the percentage. I'm going to guess 80% sure. of people sure. who go to therapists are women. Mm-hmm. 80% of the therapists, maybe 95% of the therapists are women because yeah. they're interested in people and their problems. Yes. So this is why women have more anxiety and fear and depression. Okay. Yeah. That's good. All right. What about compassion, sympathy, empathy, mm. going wild. What about mm-hmm. hyper empathy? Like, I don't want to get into the debate right now I about is empathy, sympathy, what's the exact definition yeah, of each and all that. <laughs> but but we all know s- somebody can uh, like empathize too much or they can mm-hmm. demand too much empathy and sympathy from other people. Um, is this part of a woman's 
Oh, yes, because we care about people. As you're saying, we care about people. And so we want to align ourselves with those who are hurting because we want to stand up and help Hmm. often. Um, Some women aren't wired that way, of course. But I think in general, that's what we are is we want to go. We want to hold the hand. We want to cry with them. We're willing to do those things. I think in general, men are more like, let's go build something. Yeah, you know, I, so. I, I feel like we're feeling feelings, so let's go do something else. Um, so, um, but well, for yeah. women, it's it's that desire to care, which I think is a good desire, but then that can change into the desire to fix it. Um, and we think that the solution is ourselves. So we start to think, well, if I can express to this person how hurt they are, then they'll feel known and loved but what what we're not understanding is that that's uh it's almost like a closed system yes, of just talk about that. anxiety and sadness or fear we're not giving glory to god we're not looking up and, and we're not we're not fixing it i'm not yes, helping you fix no, it so yeah. so if you're if you're hurt mm-hmm. yes and I'm empathizing, mm-hmm. sympathizing, empathizing. I'm feeling your hurt. Yes. And that's as far as it goes. Yes. Now we had one hurt person. Now we have two hurt yeah, persons. great. Cool. Is that an improvement? <laughs> no. That's not better, is it? <sighs> so yes. it's appropriate for me to uh, weep with those who weep and rejoice mm-hmm. with those who rejoice. Yes, Romans chapter of course. 12. So it's appropriate for me to feel a sense of what you're feeling. But then it's also required of me that I seek to help you. Yes. And helping you might mean, now, I need to help you understand that that's just an emotion. It's probably because you just had a baby and throw that one in the the wastebasket or whatever. So I don't want to just empathize. I want to empathize, but then counsel. Yes. Advise. Bring some nuthetia, some admonition. Mm. Nuthesia, pardon me, uh, from the Greek word for admonition. So, yes? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that we can get stuck, though. Um, Yeah, again it's a very worldly thought of like, well, if we just both understand how much we hurt, then we will heal. And it's like, wait a second, you just made a black box of magic there where everybody's going to heal because everybody's hurt. Um, and so it doesn't always make sense, but it, it, that is what the world has come up with is, is if we just need to show more and more compassion. Cause I think it might be a response to the earlier culture of like, well, just keep going, you know, too bad. Stoicism. Yeah, stoicism. And that's not the answer either because right. Christ himself wept. Mm-hmm. He did. But then he also went and told Lazarus yeah, to come forth. did something about yeah. it. Yeah. And so, and he, and he, and he did. He comforted his sisters and everything. But yeah, they're, they're just, there's something where you can get stuck in this cycle where you're just like, let's just keep empathizing with each other. And that feels good. Yeah, I was going to say, so, it, it feels good to mm-hmm. have a friend who's empathizing with yes. me. Yes. And so we're willing to stop there. Yes. She knows my soul. Yeah. But it shouldn't stop there. Mm-hmm. She needs to know my soul and then also stick a needle in me. And yes. Maybe, you know, this is going to help make you yes. better, right? Yes. Let me put a, put a splint on your elbow or yes. whatever. Yes. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Help fix things. Mm-hmm. All right. Here's what I want to bring up. And that is, um, I think that one of the sins of women that we should note is a much greater tendency to divorce. Yeah. So the numbers are in. Uh, I didn't make these numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, 70% of all divorces in America are currently initiated by women. the women. We could ask why, and the answer could be because men are dolts. Or because <laughs> women are discontent. Well, it's probably that. So it, it is so, that. And yeah. again, the psychologist mm-hmm. would probably point to it. It's the, mm-hmm. Again, it's that higher presence of anxiety and depression mm-hmm. and worry and fear and discontent that comes with it. Fault so finding. the number's even higher. Mm-hmm. So let's say I was married to you, and you have a college degree. Uh, mm-hmm. And who cares if I have one or not? But in this picture, you have a college degree. Mm-hmm. And we get a divorce. The likelihood that you initiated that divorce. Does it go up? It goes up to 90%. In that marriage, okay. we can be 90% sure it's going to be the woman who's going to divorce if anybody ever does. Oh, man. Probably because she feels more um, safe. Hey, I've got a better career. I've got a better mm. job. I don't need that man. Mm. So, all right. But but mm. women are divorcing more than men. So, I was born in 54. Okay. All right. I don't know if your parents even met each other in 54. Uh, t- I guess they had. I was born in 54. And, uh, man, back in those days, 50s, 60s, 70s even, I don't think I ever knew anybody who wasn't from an intact home 
I don't think I ever knew anybody mm. whose parents had divorced. It's like there just wasn't much. And now, it's almost like, maybe I'm imagining this, it's like I never meet anybody who doesn't have some kind of a mixed marriage with kids oh, from yes. this one and that one and so on. Mm -hmm. Like as a pastor, I'm meeting new people all the time. Mm -hmm. And very commonly now, it's it's a, there's been a situation when someone's yes. had divorce. Yes. So it's become so prevalent in our land. And I just want to say, this is one of the sins of women. Women need to say, I'm, I said till death do me part, and mm -hmm. by the grace of God, I'm going to stay there. We're going to fix this thing. We're going to work it out. I'm going to stick with this man. I'm going to deny myself for my children, but mm -hmm. try and get this thing fixed. Yes. What do you think? I, I mean, I think, I think in general, because of our uh, tendencies to both anxiety and depression, I think we can often jump to conclusions that are not good. Mm -hmm. um, and so we will say, well, I will be better off without this trigger, sure. without this person who's constantly offending me. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think, oh, I know how to fix this. It's external, not uh -huh. internal. I just need to get yes. rid of that thing out there. Get rid there, of that right? thing out there, and that will fix it. Um, and th and that's just not good. Um, we need to be focused again inward. We want to be governing our emotions and our hearts so that they glorify God. Um, and, of course, so <laughs> special cases make bad laws, right? And so we're mm. not talking about an abusive situation. We're right. not talking about infidelity. We're not talking about that. Um, those are special cases. But if we made the law saying, well, because of that, then nobody should get married, you know, right? Like that's, that's actually what yeah. the disciples said to Jesus when he told them there's no divorce yeah. except for these one or two things. And they said, well, if that's the case, then who should marry? Oh, there. Okay. Well, there you uh -huh. go. So, but yeah, we just, so we don't want to do that, but we, those cases are special and the Lord sees in those and will hold to account any wrong. But in general, I think it's a no fault divorce. There has been no fault and the women just want out. Yeah. And women who follow Jesus Christ need to say, my no. Savior doesn't permit me a divorce in mm -hmm. this circumstance. Scripture doesn't permit me a divorce in this circumstance. And I'm going to be governed by the Word of God, mm -hmm. and I submit myself to Him. And so what's my alternative? We're going to work on this marriage. Mm -hmm. We're going to make. We're going to stick in here. Mm -hmm. I need to learn the skills, and he needs to learn the skills that can make this thing better. So mm -hmm. I can't make him learn skills, but I can start learning. Can so I'm going to work on me, and hopefully he'll see that and go, Hey, this gives me more hope. She's changing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll change. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I think women need to be as committed because I I think women do want commitment, right? Oh, they absolutely. they do, and so they want that commitment. But we need to be as committed to one marriage um, as we are to submission to our husbands. Yeah, amen. And so both of those are in Scripture. Both of those are God's plan. And so and so I think that's also the other thing. And I, I know that's later on, we'll jump down to insubordination, but I think that is also something that happens in divorces is women really often will think that they have the best ideas and they won't let their husbands lead. And that can be another huge um, conflict. Let's make a segue from sure. divorce to insubordination, not sure. being submissive to your husband. Yeah. And, and here's the segue. So I think, let me mm -hmm. know what you think. Yeah. So 70% of divorces are initiated by the woman, 90% mm -hmm. where she has a um, college degree. Yes. So let's just go with the 70. 70% 70 of divorces initiated by the woman. So when a woman divorces her husband for less than a biblical cause, mm -hmm. She is, by definition, being in. She's not submitting to him. No. She's getting rid no. of him. Yes. Right? Yes. There's a big difference between I'm supposed to be submissive to that man and mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of you. So it is a massive. It's a major in your face act of sub, of insubordination. Mm -hmm. Oh to, yes. To divorce your husband when you don't have legitimate biblical grounds. The yes. grounds, by the way, are if if there's fornication, mm -hmm. he's been guilty of fornication. Or if it turns out he's a non-believer and he doesn't yes. want you and your Christian thing anymore and, yes. and he leaves, then all right, then there can be a divorce. Yes. But other than that, yeah. Word of God says we're to work on it and make yes. it better. So a woman who won't is being insubordinate to Scripture yes. to God, or a man who won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Um, it's, it's insubordination. Let's yes. go to that insubordination sure, thing. Let's so, go down. you know, uh, Ephesians, Colossians, 1 Timothy, 1 Peter, 
all of them. So it's an important thing. It comes up mm-hmm. in all those. Yes. Oh, yes. All those. Give directions to husbands. We're mm-hmm. not talking about their list today. Yep. That'll be the other podcast sure. on the sins of a man. Sure. But, uh, and, and directions to wives. And every one of those says, wives, be submissive to your husbands. Mm-hmm. Wives, mm-hmm. be submissive to your husbands. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know, in a general way, how do you think Christian women, Christ followers, are doing with that one these days? Well, feminism is in the water. In the water is a good way to put it. It's just around, and so that is almost the default position. Um, I was even told recently, um, it was in jest, but um, a, uh, another wife of unbelieving um, marriage, she was like, oh, yes, you know that it's uh, what what his is yours and what yours is, is yours. That's that's what a marriage is now. And I'm like, I don't, oh. I'm going to back up on that one. Um, and so, um, yeah, I think, we, you know, everybody's saying, well, the future is female, you know, we're the king. And I don't know, maybe this is getting too deep, but I think it's just idolatry. Um, I think it's the um, idol of of Mother Earth, honestly. So whatever, we can just throw that out if we need to. But um, it's just like, I think people are making it about, themselves and so it's i like even idolatry of themselves that they just want to be the king of their of their own lives or the queen of their own lives the princess the princess of their Uh own lives and they don't want to submit to anybody Hmm. and so they just yes i think that they're not doing a good job at it and i think i think sometimes we say that we are complementarian but we really in practice are egalitarian um, or we want egalitarianism, which is just like equality. Um, and that's not recognizing the differences that God designed in men and women and even in how he wants us to operate and what he wants us to do in our roles. Yes. And so, those, those roles are God assigned and mm-hmm. the roles map to our differing natures. Yes, right? exactly. The woman's made for the role. The role is designed yes. for the woman, the man for the role, the role for the man. Exactly. So, yes, thank and, you. And the word... <laughs> Be submissive is a Greek word, hupatasso. Yes. It's used by the military a lot. It means to rank yourself under yes. that guy who's over you. Yes. So a wife is supposed to, in her mind, in her soul, rank herself under. In the family, mm-hmm. uh, he outranks me. Yeah. So so um, if, if he wants to say, you know what, baby, I've listened to you. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. We haven't been able to agree on it. You know what? In, in this case, I'm going to let it go your way. And you would say, okay, great. He outranks me. He can say that. Cool, right? That'd be mm-hmm. But in another case, he says, mm-hmm. you know what? We're just not going to buy that new van right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I love you. You're my woman. Mm-hmm. I'm just not going to buy that. She, then she needs to rank herself. So let's use that as an example. And then let's say the next week that van breaks down. What does the Their woman old do? Van? Their old van? Their old van. What does she do? Does the woman then say, I told you so. You should have listened to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and does the man say, oh, you know, I'm so defensive, blah, blah, blah. No. What he says is, it was my choice. And I said, no, I should have made a different choice. Sure. You know, right? Isn't that like, that's the full leadership. Um, and the woman should say, oh, yes. Well, you made the you made the wisest choice with the information you had then. You didn't know the van was going to break down next week. Well, now we know. And so, and being look. Rational. Yeah, be, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be rational. Mm-hmm. That was good. And so, but it. That instead of resulting in a conflict where she blames him and it creates bitterness, like a, we were mm-hmm. talking about earlier, she says, oh, no, he's taking full responsibility for it. He knows. Yeah, support yeah. that man. Yeah. So part of submission, I think, is mm-hmm. a, a tendency, an inclination in the woman's soul mm-hmm. to encourage and support mm. the leadership of her husband. Mm. So if she's constantly mm. cutting away at, carping yes. about, cutting yes. down, why, cutting his knees off from mm-hmm. under him, uh, she's not at all supporting. She's mm-hmm. damaging the leadership, and he might just give up and stop trying to lead and let her lead. And you know that's mm-hmm. how we keep peace. Does that ever happen? I, I think so. Also, I often it is said in scripture that women respect your husbands, and I've always been a little bit like, okay, but how? What does that look like in my life? And I think it it looks like that encouragement. Like, do you have anything else to add to that? Like, how do you? How does a woman respect her husband? So yeah, it certainly means that she, she's encouraging his leadership, Mm -hmm. his strengths and so on. And Mm -hmm. um, maybe even mentioning, you know, I like that the way you did that. Paul ends in Mm -hmm. Ephesians. He's talked to wives, he's talked to husbands, and then he circles back to wives and says, 
final words in that section are, mm-hmm. uh, and let the wives see that they respect their husbands. Yes. So men need respect. Women need love. Yes. Men need men, yes. men need respect. So show him your respect. He's to love her like Christ loved the church, mm-hmm. die to himself and give himself for her. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty nice circle going on there. Yes. Right? That ought to work, right, yes. with everybody, yes. but, it, but it doesn't always work. Let's go back to the first act of female insubordination yes. ever. Mm-hmm. What was her yes. name? Her Eve. name was Eve, right. <laughs> so Eve was insubordinate to Adam and didn't mm. support and encourage his leadership mm. from the start. Well, I okay. guess she hadn't read Ephesians 5 yet, so maybe we can cut her a little <laughs> slip, but not really. No. But what should she have done? When, when the devil, the serpent, comes out and goes, yeah. has God really said? And, and she should have, wait a minute. Let me go get my husband. He's the leader. God gave him those words. Let's get him in here. He's mm-hmm. the one responsible for our spiritual lives and all that. So, mm. so she, But she dealt directly with the attacker. Mm. She dre- mm. dealt directly with um, the man was supposed to be in charge of, let's call it, outside relations. Sure, yes. Yes, but she she just stepped right in, so, mm. and everything went bad because of that. Mm. So um, Eve was insubordinate, not recognizing Adam's, Oh, position of headship, position mm-hmm. of authority over her. Um, he does have authority. Yes. Um, and women today are doing the same thing? Yeah, they might not notice it. I think I think we can say, it, we can trick ourselves often. There's a lot of self-deception that happens for a woman, I think. And so, but but if we are noticing, again, that grumbling, complaining spirit towards our husbands, I think that's not respect, right? Right. And so, or if we're always saying like, he just made my decision um, or something like that, you know, like, or it, that, or if um, you talk to girlfriends about him and bad mouth, that's not respect. Gossip. There we go. We're we're hitting on all the things back through. And so Mm. we need to be very careful in the way that we um, relate to our husband, because what we are getting to do is we are showing Christ and the marriage to the church. Mm. And so we don't want to show that poorly. Mm. We don't want to show the church complaining about Christ, her savior. Yeah, we don't right. want to do that. And so, um, yeah, we don't, we, we don't want to do that, but yeah, we can, um, I, I think we have to, we should influence our husbands. We should share our opinions and our husbands should respect them. Absolutely. Um, and then the wife is the neck that turns the head, yeah, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. But then we, we share our opinions with open hands. We don't need to mm, hold on to them good. tight and say, if he doesn't do this, I'm going to be angry. This at is non negotiable. Yes. I'm going to blow everything up. If yes. Uh-huh. Because but I think it says in Proverbs that a foolish woman tears down her own house with her hands. With her hands. Yes. And often I think about that because, oh man, even me just yeah. not being there for, for too long yeah. means the house is it, good. It starts off with what's the start of it? A wise woman <laughs> builds her, her house. house. Yes. A foolish woman pulls, pulls down, down her house, house with, with her own hands. hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's it's it. It's a very great picture, isn't it? It's kind of vivid. Like I can yes. just see her grabbing the window. She's oh, angry, yes. pulling it down, so on. Oh, yes. So, by the way, there are sins of men involved here, too, with oh, yes. um, like being lordly leaders, mm-hmm. not loving leaders, mm-hmm. or being absent leaders. Like, I, I'm not going to try and yeah. Yeah, abdication. Mm-hmm. So, that's for the other video that we're going to yeah, have. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about that. Somebody later. else. Um, yes. But yeah, I, so, I, 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 oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you, you, you. <laughs> I was just going to say some of the things I think that women can do in this situation is that um, we can think that we are just sharing our opinion over and over again, but we're really just nagging, <laughs> right? And so we're just like, well. So I, nagging is one yes, of the sins of women. Yes. Another sin of the tongue related to gossip. <laughs> yes, but also it's like, um, I think it also goes back to that com- that empathy as well, because it's like, well, if you cannot, you are not representing my my reasons. And if you did, you would do what I think. Hmm. And it's like, if you were feeling, yeah, if you were feeling everything that I'm feeling right now, you would make this decision the way I want you to. Um, and so that's like a nagging or pouting maybe even, um, and just like that drip, 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 drip of a wife. And so if you don't make the decision the way I wanted to, if you're not Mm -hmm. feeling what I'm doing and you don't Mm -hmm. make the decision, you're bad. Yes. Right. You're bad. There's something wrong with you that you're not Mm -hmm. willing to feel. You're not compassionate. Yeah. And you've offended me. Right. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) it's kind of a catch 22. She wants him to be a man Mm -hmm. who's not all feeling, 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 right. Mm -hmm. I I need you to be a man for our babies, for our family, for Mm -hmm. need you to be able to stand up to the world out there. need you to be able to man on the job, bring Mm -hmm. home the bacon and all that. But yet, sometimes she wants him to be a woman, mm-hmm. and then she'll despise him if he does be a woman. Yes. Right? But anyway. Yes. Yes. So, oh, uh, can, can women deceive themselves into thinking, oh, I'm a, I'm a submissive wife. Sure. I know the mm. Bible says wives be submissive, and yeah, I qualify. I, I'm submissive. Um, but maybe she's, um, let's say if she doesn't get her way, 
There are tactics. Mm, yes. There are means. There are tools she can employ mm -hmm. to get away. What are some of those tactic tactics? Oh no, I, there was a story once. I think I, these are unique to women, and oh, men very have other ways so. of dealing with things. Um, I think we can. So I am not passive aggressive, but I think women can tend towards passive aggressiveness. Um, and so there's a story in my family about um, how loudly um, a grandmother would make dinner. Um, if she was disappointed oh, really? in her it was husband, a loud it was a loud <laughs> pots, and pans. pots and pans and slamming cabinets and things like that. And that is what is she doing? She's poisoning the environment. She's tearing mm, down her house. That's well said. Oh, right? good. Right. Um, and so she, instead of creating an environment of peace and joy and mm. love, um, she's destroying that. And so I think that passive aggressiveness can um, just create a coldness. Um, and so, and, and that's like, yeah, coldness. Yeah. And they think, oh, well, I'm not saying anything. And it's like, no, you're not. But man, is your attitude not good? Mm. Um, and I would call that, well, with my kids, I'd say, you're pouting. Um, that's not allowed mm -hmm. here. Go upstairs. Um, and so, but with um, ourselves, I think we just have to discipline ourselves of saying, like, I think I'm pouting. And again, just repent. Say, God, I'm pouting. I don't want, I don't like this decision my husband made. I think it was foolish. Help me to respect him, and even here, even in this. Um, and then I think we can also just withhold affection, or we can... Yes. I, I'm a very verbal person, so instead of withholding affection, I will name call. Lord, help me. Um, and so I will just... I. By the Lord's grace, I've not done this for many years, but I would just throw anything at Jason. I mean, I would be like, and you don't even pick up your socks, and you don't do this, and you don't do that. And so we just, who know him want to know, was that a real problem? Uh, he would not pick up his socks? No, I'm making uh, that up. But, uh, okay. oh, but I would use I would oh, use I was anything. kind of hoping that was going to be a real problem. Oh, gosh. You could uh, do some pastoral counseling uh, yes. on that. Oh, I gosh. could rib him about that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh -huh. But, yes, just throwing. And, like, and there was one time in which I actually threw water at him. Debbie th threw a napkin at me. Well, a napkin's a little. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. her more gentle, yeah, a napkin loving through way. napkin the air slows down real <laughs> yes, fast. Real, but I splashed water. water in his face. Whoa. Oh my gosh! And so, but so we're we're making them pay for their decision, though. Yes, there and, are and ways so you can make a guy pay, right? Rather than respecting their decision yeah. and taking our hurt, I, like, and we can even say, I, I, th I think there's a place. Maybe you can tell me that there isn't, uh, where we can say to our husband, "Okay, this decision hurts." I don't know what to do with that hurt. And he can what? Lead us to the cross. He should lead. Yeah. Lead yeah. us, lead us to scripture. Yeah. Um, lead, lead us to, um, even just the emotional stability of like, this is the decision that has to be made right now. There again, through COVID, there were so many decisions that Jason mm. and I disagreed on and we, mm. but I, I had to wrestle and he helped me to wrestle my heart into submission of like, he's making the right choice right now. This is scary. But I'm going to trust him hmm. and his, and ultimately the Lord. Very good. And so, wow. All right. So, um, I was talking with my wife about this podcast yesterday, and she gave me one, two, three, four. Oh, well, we've that's touched wonderful. Them. So, uh, one of her, one of the first ones. This was my word. She described the thing, and then I gave it this, this <laughs> that's name. That's great. I love and, it. And it's the word obfuscation or obfuscating yes. something yes. to make the verb of mm -hmm. it. So one of the sins of women, my wife says, I'm letting her contribute here. She's home with your kids. Yes. She gets to talk into the contribute. podcast. Yes, and she's she's what she's saying there is a woman might make obscure what's really going on in her heart. Oh, yes. And point this to something else. Mm -hmm. So, yes. you know, really, I'm just bitter because I, that didn't go my way or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I can't say that because I'll look real bad. So what yes. I say instead is, well, I'm upset that mm -hmm. I, now I can't make it up. Uh -huh. X, yeah. Y, Z or whatever. Yes, of course. You didn't take out the trash. Yes. But that's not really that's the not thing. That's not the real thing. Right. No. So is this really a thing? Oh, yes. And I think it goes back to our self-deception where we want to think well of ourselves. I think all people do. But women, especially because we're emotions are like a marsh to me. They still, like a foggy marsh where you can't That's see. That's an interesting picture. A oh, foggy marsh. Gosh, there, it's so mushy and it's hard to get your hands on anything. And so you're just like, I don't know. I just feel upset about something. So I'm going to be a little pouty and um, negative. 
about everything because I can't put my finger on what it is. And so whether or not it's a intentional, like, I'm going to make this uh, confusing for him or a unintentional, I don't know why. She might not know what yeah, it is. Yeah, I might not even know. But we don't want to mm-hmm. admit that. We want to say, I'm just feeling sad. And you know what? It's because of this most recent thing that you did, you know, and I'm going to say it. And you're going to need to cry with me. And so, you know, it's just like. <laughs> but, yes. You know, you could have you could have gone into acting. Oh, gosh. Stuff. <laughs> um, my wife also said, she used this term, uh, women can be guilty of weaponizing. Just want to remind you, mm. we're doing one of these things on the men. There are sins of yes, men. Yes, right? well, we'll come. Today we'll come we're on the it. ones of women. Yes. Uh, actually, we're going to re- release the men before we release this of one. Course, but anyway, of course. So <laughs> weaponizing. So, um once you're offended about something, you get so upset that then you turn things in the family and the family life into weapons oh, yes. to throw at him. It might be verbal, it might be whatever, yes. but you just, you weaponize, you get mean oh, on that yes. thing. My wife also said, uh, mm-hmm. just anger and malice. We've mm-hmm. already talked about that. Yes. Um, and then she talked about tactics, tools that mm-hmm. women will use to oh, yes. kind of get the way. But we've already covered some of those. Yes, yes, we have. So, I don't know, Taylor, wonder what y'all think of this. This is the great... Clive Staples Lewis, C.S. Lewis, in his book, Mere Christianity, a Mm -hmm. very ginormously popular and wonderful book. Mm -hmm. And he makes a statement in there that I'm going to read to you. And Mm. I think it's totally, totally unacceptable and out of sync with and not PR to an awful lot of people in our day. But I don't think it raised much of a you know, an eyebrow in his day. Oh, Maybe yes. it did some. Depends mm-hmm. on where you were. If you were in Oxford or um, Cambridge, it probably did. Mm. Here he says, and I think he's right, the relations of the family to the outer world, what might be called foreign policy. Mm-hmm. So the foreign policy of the family must depend in the last resort upon the man because he always ought to be and usually is much more just to the outsiders. This mm. is getting interesting. Yes. A woman is primarily fighting for her own children, and she is. She's fueled and driven for that, mm-hmm. and she should be, and they need her to be. It's good. Mm-hmm. A woman is primarily fighting for her own children and her husband against the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. So naturally, almost, in a sense, rightly, their claims, the claims of her family, override for her all other claims. Oh, yes. She is, this is great, she is the special trustee of their interests. Mm -hmm. Now back to the husband. He has the last word on things out there in order to protect the other people from the intense family (laughs) patriotism of the wife. It's so true. It's true, but it's (laughs) It's insane, isn't it? I mean, it's crazy, but it's true. She is fueled by God, made by God, driven by the way he made her, to keep that family alive, to protect those kids, to even protect her husband from the world, mm-hmm. as long as she's liking her husband. <laughs> um, so he'll be more fair to the neighbor. And then Lewis mm-hmm. says, if anyone doubts this, let me ask a simple question. If your dog has bitten the child next door, or if your child has hurt the dog next door, which would you sooner have to deal with, the master of that house or the mistress? <laughs> Well, that's an easy one for me. Uh-huh. I'm going to go over and talk to the guy. So let's say yeah. my dog bit their kid, and I have to go over there and say, man, man, I'm sorry. I heard my dog bit your kid. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to the guy. If I'm talking to the wife, she's probably going to try and kill me. Right? She's yeah, very unhappy. So but if I talk to the guy, he's probably like, it's all right, man. I'm trying to teach my kid how to deal with dogs. Yes. But, by the way, I like dogs. What kind of dog yeah, you got? Exactly. Okay, would you show me your dog? It's probably going to go like that. Yes. So uh, there's a difference in men and women here, in, and the result of the difference is, the man generally has to be, what did he call him? The uh, the woman's the trustee of the family's mm-hmm. interests, and he is the uh, one who protects the world from her the intense <laughs> family patriotism. Yes. What do you think about all that? Oh, I think it's so right on. I think it is. Um, because we, it's our people. It's our people. These are our kids, our husband, and we um, help create the safe harbor for, for them, the home. Um, and you dare offend them i'm coming at you with pitchforks like absolutely not um these are my people um and so you just have to uh yes i i just give this over to jason that's very very accurate of what i do um we've covered a lot today is there anything else you want to talk about oh i have one oh yeah i I want i wanted to get down to that too go ahead um edith schaefer said something about the woman's role as being kind of like almost a uh, museum curator for the home. 
And that's that's our role. We get to do that. It's a lovely role. I remember that. That's in her book, What is a Family? <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. Uh -huh. And so I want to do that. But that doesn't mean that I'm very good at um, being an army hmm. for my family. Because yes. what I want to do is I want to just hurt. I don't want to be an ambassador or create smooth relations Negotiate. at all no i don't no. want to do that my fa i've built this i've helped build this with my husband and i've curated it and i don't want you to poke at it yes. so yeah. there, there are definitely times so i already told you my mm -hmm. my wife is very balanced very level You've been keeled. but there there have been plenty of times when i say to her um baby girl your husband calls you baby girl isn't that funny it is hilarious to me <laughs> what that is baby girl um let me talk to them <laughs> yes. And she'll always go right with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. It's yeah. good to do that. It works out pretty well. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I think we're going to draw yeah. this to the close yep. now, is uh, we talked about this is the sins of the woman mm -hmm. and how to slay them, how mm -hmm. to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And I felt like we'd need a section at the end where we'd really turn to that. Yes. But no, you've been telling us how all the way through. Uh, you've been doing the woman of God thing right you know, for us to uh, see where you're taking everything to Scripture, taking everything to the Lordship of Christ, mm -hmm. taking everything to prayer, taking everything to reality. Let me mm -hmm. think rightly about this. Taking things to your husband. So I think we've done a lot for this, but I just want to add a little list of how, how does a believer slay sins? Yeah. So there are these things called the means of grace. Theologians mm -hmm. call them the means of grace. That term's not in the Bible, mm -hmm. but we've searched the Bible and you know where are the where are the means of grace? You might think of them as spigots. My little yes. brain thinks of them as spigots. I like spigots. So that there's a bunch of spigots around the outside of your house. If you need to drink, you can go to one of those spigots. Where are the spigots in the Christian life so I can drink in what my soul needs to deal with a sin or a mm -hmm. temptation? Yes. And theologians call those spigots the means of grace, and they are very simple things like. Gathered worship. Mm -hmm. Gathered worship yes. is intended by God to be a weekly means for sanctifying you, for cleansing yes. your soul, for strengthening you in the inner man. You want to make it a priority in your life. Husbands, you want to get your wives and your children mm -hmm. to church every Sunday you possibly can, unless providentially hindered, because that's God's spigot. That's God's means mm -hmm. of grace. I want my wife, I want my kids under the mm -hmm. spigot. And so if, if you're a wife, we're talking to women today, and you're struggling with some of the things we've talked about, mm -hmm. well... Don't do what uh, Shakespeare said, get thee to a nunnery. Uh, <laughs> do this instead. Uh, get thee to a spigot. Mm -hmm. Get to a church. Get under the means of grace. Mm -hmm. And you know, what do I mean by that? Well, the preaching of the word, the reading of the word, the fellowship of the saints, communion, baptisms. Uh, worship. Yes, all that. The mm -hmm. worship, singing the songs together. Mm -hmm. So gathered worship. Also, how do you slay these things? Get into the word. Mm -hmm. Y'all have just seen that in Taylor again and again. Mm -hmm. She's obviously... Dealing with real life, husband, three boys, crazy stuff. We all lived through COVID together. And uh, yet she's obviously hit a lot of scripture in her heart to help her deal with things and keep and told us how she takes her brain back up to the throne and submits yes. again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So you want to do that. Prayer. You know, prayer is a powerful thing mm -hmm. in a Christian's life. Fellowship, maybe mm -hmm. even fasting. And mm -hmm. um, you certainly want the fruit of the spirit to come mm -hmm. as a result of all those things. So I'd say those are like the general yeah. Nothing spectacular. These are the, somebody called them the the extraordinary, ordinary yes. means of grace. It's true. Do you have anything else? I would just say, just expect for the Lord to work. Like, actually expect for him to meet you. Um, ask him to reveal sin, because he will be faithful to that. Um, and then repent of it, and expect him to forgive you, and then give you what you need to be faithful and holy and good. That's really wonderful. That's a wonderful place to end. Okay. Thank you, Taylor, for being here with me today. I'm happy. And uh, I'm going to have you again on the podcast someday. We'll figure out another sure. topic that we can talk about. Great. But uh, it's been a wonderful time. Thanks for joining us on Grounded today. We come out on all the major platforms. We're generally twice a month. So uh, we'd appreciate it. If you want to help us out, give us a like or rate us a review or even share us with a friend. Thanks for your help. Until next time.